Hey folks, I'm Ryan Davis. Welcome to Giant Bomb. Uh, so, summer months here, post E3, not a ton of new releases happening right now. Uh, but this week, we had Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Uh, that's the third one of those that they've released come out for the Xbox uh, 360 on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and Steam. Uh, problem is that no one here really knows a goddamn thing about Magic the Gathering. So I brought in a couple of ringers today uh, to help bring us all up to speed and, and show us what the Duels of the Plane Walkers is all about. We have uh, freelancing for life himself, <laughs> uh, Mr. Matthew Rory, win winner of the Golden Duder. Matthew, how's it going? Good to do a, right. get, catch up on some hand touching. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and from Double Fine Productions, none other than Brad Muir, uh, hey. a runner up in the Golden Duder. Oh, man. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Knocked you out by gotta... knocked out by yeah. none other than uh, Mr. Matthew Rory. Losing here. losing to the eventual winner. That's you know. Now if you're gonna go out, that's that's how I want to go. I out. brought you both in here today because Brad Muir, you were uh, tapped last year to provide a, a, a top ten list for Giant Bombs. Uh, best of the year feature and you named magic the gathering i believe you named magic the gathering online though as one yeah. of your favorite games of 2011. yeah uh, so i, I knew that you had the magic it. thing pretty bad and uh, and matt rory i'm not sure how i knew i think i just knew i've been talking about it on twitter these games are always uh, uh one of my favorite releases of the year uh, as opposed to, like madden 60 bucks every year every year they put out a new magic game for 10 bucks it's, yeah it's like yeah cool and I, it's ba is it basically the same thing every year yeah, so I think this is a new developer, though. Okay. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to blaze through this first opening enemy. Uh, so we want to show you the new addition. The biggest new addition to the game this year is Plane Chase, which Plane is kind of this. Say it with Plane Chase. Plane, Plane Chase. Chase. So it's a, a big kind of crazy free-for-all with a bunch of random weird rules that goes on. So we're going to try and unlock that real quick. This is the very first match of the game. So. Okay, I, and I, I do want to be clear here. I want to reiterate, I know nothing about Magic. Don't have to. That's okay. okay. This Thank is a great you. beginner product for Magic. Uh, it's a little bit less. Yeah, it totally feels like this is the Trojan horse to sort of like get you into. This is how they got me back into it. Actually, was like uh, you, you the, played one of these duels the of the first plane one walkers. It was probably like three years ago or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, "Hey, here's this. You know, you, you play. Hey, ten hey, bucks. Nerds, you play some hey, magic. Nerds, play king, ten bucks. I'm like, yeah, ten bucks. I'll check check this shit out on my couch. Yeah. And then it's like. You know, it has some like intentional shortcomings to yeah. it. You're like, oh, this isn't quite what I want the Magic the Gathering yeah, experience on my yeah, computer to be. Yeah. So they sort of like, uh, they're it's, like, why it's don't a great... you check out Magic the Gathering online? Yeah, it's where good. you have to pay for your virtual yeah. cards. And I'm like, okay. So Matt, is that where you draw the line? Are you not interested in Magic the Gathering online? I used to play a lot of Magic in real life, and then uh, again, like the the fact of paying four bucks for a virtual set of cards that you don't even know how long they're going to support that game. That is that is also kind of a at That's least like, when you buy the cards, you have the freaking cards yeah, yeah, yeah. for and life. They, it's true. A lot of people, and here's the great thing: they do have advertisements inside the game. <laughs> uh, so. That's really fantastic. It's not. It's not that wow. bad. You, you click pass, it's no big deal. So if you if you beat Garrick, you do get to unlock the plane chase. Do you want to try and beat sure. Garrick? Uh, and you, we've only unlocked. Can you try and beat Garrick. We've only unlocked beat two. Garrick. You can use his own deck. Who's Garrick? Him. Is that is that someone of? Is there even like? Fiction for yes. Magic the Gathering. There are a lot is of there a world and a universe and well, Plane Chase. We'll talk about that during, when we unlock Plane Chase. But all these people, uh, not Virtua Davis, but Garrick. Uh, yeah, you guys are playing on my profile. Lil Thanks for Lilith. That, uh, that all looks other... just like you, dude. Is that actually? <laughs> that's it. That's your that's your Planeswalker persona right there. That's my the, avatar with the horns. Um, wait, we should probably pick a different. When I go to right? when I go to how about the blue one? When I go to cons, sure. we'll play that's the blue what, one. That's we what I look like. So this is great. If you see me in San Diego. 12th oh. through the 15th, that's what I'll look like. I want to point out a, uh, a little uh, Some weird... Nice animation right there. There's a weird thing going on in this game that uh, that you have to play Magic to know. But uh, So all these characters are actual people called Planeswalkers, the most powerful wizards in the world. That is a Planeswalker card uh, in Magic the Gathering. Planeswalker cards are not supported in Duels of the Planeswalkers. God, that's totally <laughs> because you're playing as a Planeswalker. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you're, the characters that you're fighting what? against are also Planeswalkers, but they don't support this type of card yet. And they're like, man, we haven't figured that out yet. It's been two years since these cards mm -hmm. have existed in Magic, and yet they're just kind of, yeah, we don't really have. Yeah, Is it because they're like, are they like, for, way, for they're crazy cards. overpowered? They're, they're like, complicated. They, they're, okay. they require more, they require. For sure, like, for sure they could put them in yeah. there if they wanted to, right? This is just another thing where they're like, oh, look how, look at this cool different card type right here. Like, maybe you should, 
Maybe you should buy a pack of cards. What do you think? Yeah. Huh? Maybe uh, you can't do this in the game, like, look but... How, yeah, they're like, look how fucking cool this thing is. Maybe you should go buy it. So I think this is another one of their, like, gateway type things. Yeah. Where they're like, hey, Saying we want Wizards to... of the Coast, a bunch of diabolical motherfuckers. They're wizards. I, I will not, yeah, and I will not go on record saying that because <laughs> they are fucking wizards and who knows, like, who's watching yeah, right now. Yeah, no. But, um... Height, weight, 8'2", yeah, 460 pounds. He's 8'2"? He's 8'2", yeah, dude. 460 pounds. That's a 36. It's like, how tall was Andre the Giant? <laughs> Seven... Four, I want to say you're saying like that? you're saying Garrick is bigger than Andre the Giant. A foot taller than Andre wow. the Giant. I think he was. I, I, Alex Navarro is no doubt gonna sh send me some uh, horrible email okay, about his real weight. Okay, so let's, let's night. take a look at what we got here. That's a. Uh, we got. This is not a great hand. Uh, at Brad Muir, as I was saying to you uh, before we started uh, airing here, uh, you might want to play the red deck, dude. This is going to be. Well, you do have these blockers, though. Yeah. About, we'll, about half we'll of this. the art on Magic: The Gathering cards looks like it would be just as at home. <laughs> Uh, on the the box for an Atari 2600 game, dude, absolutely. That's I think that's really their uh, their art bible. That's that's where is <laughs> that's the, the the mo there. <laughs> yeah, it's that they really the art has gotten a lot better. If you they look have. at um, old Magic cards like, like Arabian when, when Nights I used to stuff, play back yeah. in high school, that's kind of dating myself. But uh, well, they, yeah, it's intensely weird. You ever read of the old the old art? I'm pretty sure everyone that's played Magic: The Gathering played in high school. Yeah. At some point. Yeah, it's kind of true. I don't, I don't think it? there's anyone that's playing Magic: The Gathering that got into it in their you know early 30s. It's weird though because yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Now that I think about what it, like I was trying to think oh, about nice. like the kids that this are playing really, this is, now. This is like perfect, like right right there with you know like D and D novels. Like this is made for kids in high school. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's the wheelhouse. Do we don't have any For questions sure. from chat or anything? Do I don't we? have a chat oh, thing that's too yet. Bad. Oh shit. That would have been nice to have. Um, I, I have questions. What the hell is going on here? So we're we're blazing through this to try to get to the plane chase setting. Uh, this is a basic magic uh, duel. Okay. One on one. Well, explain the bla the basic magic okay. duel to me because I really don't know so, anything here. So, so you have a deck. You, you have, have a deck. deck. And so that's over there. You can see it. That yeah. is your library. It's and like so, a deck and of so cards. that is in this case, that is not something you built on your own. That was been no. They're, they're been they've been pre constructed. Uh, so you we selected oh, the you blue can't. one. I'm gonna do that next turn. Yeah. I'm gonna put it on the flying guy. Okay. Uh, so you have this this deck of cards and it's lands and spells. Okay. Okay. So you see like this island. Who? What did like he cast? This, he cast lightning greaves. So that lets oh, dudes that's, that lets yeah, dudes okay. attack. Shroud that's, is not so important. That's gonna be okay. Uh, so it's like lands and spells. So you see this island. This is a land. Yeah. That's a resource in the game. Okay. Land and is then, all, land is mana, right? And yes. every non-land card in the game is counts as a spell. So Got you it. need to use the resources from the lands mana. So you tap your lands to get mana every turn. Okay. And then, and then you use those to cast the spells, okay? And the spells come in different flavors, like creatures. So here are some of my creatures. We've got this like Kraken Hatchling out mm -hmm. here, and we've got this other, what is this guy? And that's power Skywind and toughness there, how much damage they deal, how much damage they can take. Yeah. The zero four one one is basically not used to attack at all because it can't, uh, it can't. Uh, and, those, and those stats are basically like on top of like your stats as the player, right? No, they're not, they're separate. Uh, you but have, what I mean is like, if they burn through those, they, will they, they have to get through those yes. before they can get to you? Yes, Okay. exactly. Um, so basically what most duels revolve around are creatures on creatures, trying to bust their, their creatures to hit them directly like he just did. Yeah. He has a flying creature which flies right over the land creature that he has. There, I, obviously this is like an amazing amount of terminology coming at you. Ooh, this is a big creature. Wow, 8-8. Eight, eight. You might be a gout oh, to get. Know gonna... Yeah, I don't know what you can do with that. Well, we've got this guy. You can get negative five, negative zero, but you'll still have to deal eight damage to him. That's pretty terrible. Well, okay, so this thing is going to make our dude grow. Oh, and he also gave it haste. Oh! That's awesome. Uh, I don't know what you can do about okay, that. So you can cast that negative five thing. It. And then, you, yeah, and then he'll survive at least, so I would definitely cast that on him. But this. Oh, he's he hexproof, too. Oh, he has too. shroud. Does he have? That's oh, awesome. Shit. We just failed. Yeah, you might, you might lose this one. If you die, I'll try again. I'll see did if you, I can Did die. you just lose this match I already? I think we probably did. I have to say, you guys are not doing a great job of making this seem like the accessible magic. So uh, we're, we're, not, also, we're playing you know this what? on easy. This is really interesting. And we interesting. just used the fucking magic brain trust here, and you and you are getting worked. So. It's well, interesting because um, I think that this is the third iteration of it, so they keep making it a little bit more complicated each time. Yeah. So I think that it has, like, this version is, does feel a lot more complicated than than previous versions of it. I can get this guy out. Yeah, right? you can get him out too, uh, uh, the other dude, and then you'll be able to get something back from your 
you're, I don't know if you I have any. I don't think there's anything. I'm just gonna sit on that. I would use yeah, it for chump, chump walking though, because you're not gonna be able to, unless you wanna. We'll use it next turn. Yeah, maybe. Um, so basically, most magic is one-on-one -on -one duels, uh, and there's a color wheel too. There's uh, blue, white, red, black, green. Okay. And you can have a deck made up of as many colors as you want to, but every spell you cast has to have a color associated with. Like all, all of our deck of colors are blue right now, so it's really easy to get all the mana for them. Uh, but if you, the more colors you add, the more difficult it is to get. So there's different stuff. color land that. Yes. Islands, and uh, mountains, and plains. And and you need to have the right color of land to get the mana for these different colors of cards? Yes. Okay. I would use it on the 4-4. Four, four. Oh, I was going to so do that's, this that's the kind of, I can't do it on the 4-4. That's, oh, that's why you wouldn't want to just have like more than two colors yeah, in a deck. Yeah, basically most uh, tournament decks are two colors, if, if not uh, sometimes three, but that's pretty rare now. For the most part, it is uh, two colors is the, uh, the gold standard, so to speak. Well, that's actually for a, tournament a, play, kind of a pun in magic terms because you do have. Oh, that's not going to do. I think you're going to die. Yeah, this is looking pretty, looking pretty grim. But we'll see. What and again, you're do. doing we'll this on our... my profile, so I am going to lose <laughs> another game of magic. I think that's okay, though. It's just like in high school. <laughs> um, well, we'll get in there with this guy. And you'll have the five five, so you'll survive another turn. It depends on what you get. If you can get some kind of bounce spell, if you could bounce yeah, it eight it's eight, possible, that'd be good. right? But I don't think it's going to happen. So, for ten bucks, you get a pretty complete Magic experience. Not every card in the game is in here, and uh, there are well, some there's like tens of thousands of yeah, cards at this point, right? True. Uh, all these decks are custom made beforehand to fit into the game, um, so it's it's normally oh yeah, that's gonna hurt. That shroud, that haste thing is pretty powerful. Okay, if we block this guy and then we block this guy, and then I can take out another five. Oh wait. You can take away the other five, yeah. And then you'll um, have five damage coming at you. This guy? Wait, I can move this. How do I move this guy? I have to withdraw him. Yeah. What if I block this? No, that's probably right. I think it was right. Oh, wait, the 04, I could put the 04 over here. But if you put the 04 in the 88, you'll block the whole thing. I think I'm going to hit that with the, uh, the minus five. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? So you're just trying to, to choose yeah, which of your... Yeah, cast it, it's... cast it, cast it. Oh. Oh, did I miss the... <laughs> I think you did. Wow. <laughs> I think you might I think, die here. I think we're dead. Eight. I think we're dead. Yeah, that's it. I think we just died. I'm going to try it with... Brad Mirror, post-game here. You know, it's hard What to, went wrong? It's, <laughs> it's hard to talk and play at the same time. True. I think. It's a bullshit it excuse. It's, it a turn really is, it's a turn-based it? game. It really is. This is what I was worried about. I was worried about coming on your show and having people. And you you had said that you had just played a whole bunch of the last two years' games. I have. I have. All right, um, Matt Rory, you show how it's done. And we play. Uh, the other yeah. thing, too, is that we play in the office now. That's a good thing about working as a game developer is that there's, like, tons of nerds around all the time. So you can just, like, you know. Well, that's, that's have, a thing about a game you know, developer. Yeah. It's kind of nice. <laughs> I'm going to try green on green here. Let's see. Oh, actually, uh, I'll show you the deck manager real quick. One of my big frustrations oh, with this game. Oh, what's wrong with that lady's neck? She got bit by a vampire. A, vamp um, a vampire. A vampire. Yeah, definitely vampires. So the deck yeah, manager yeah, in this yeah, game yeah. is... Are there robots? Yes, yeah, You there know are. what? There actually are kind there of robots. artifact creatures. Artifact constructs? Yes. <laughs> they're <ab> <laughs> uh, this is yes, good. They're, this is good. They're absolutely... Bridge are. push there. There absolutely are artifact... How do I zoom Contrast. in on <laughs> can, you, can you trigger it? So one thing that's really interesting about this is that you're going to unlock, every time you win with a deck, you're going to unlock new cards with it. So you see there's like 29 cards that you can unlock as you go through. I'm going to reset this real quick. The problem is it doesn't show you, oh wow, that's what I unlocked. I do want him. This is a really powerful creature. Um, added to the deck. Yeah, 8-8 Trample. Uh, it's, it's pretty, I'm going to add that to the deck. So um, add to deck. And that'll be what I do. That's really it, right? But this is basically okay. So I get, I get the eight eight. That's you know damage done, damage received. Very you big. Say trample. What does that mean? Trample. So when the creatures attack, they'll tap. They'll turn sideways when yeah. you declare them as attackers, and then you just send them at the other player, right? So he's got his creatures in front of him, so he gets a chance to put his creatures, assign them as blockers to all the attackers. So you, all, all, when you attack, you just get to attack the other side. It's just like, I'm just going after you, yeah. and I'm just sending my dudes over there. And, and then, then the you, other guy is like, okay, like how do I want to arrange my blocks? So it yeah. gives advantage to the defender, which is good, is that you get to decide like who, you know, which guy you want to block which guy. But, so in the case of Trample, like if you have that 8-8 guy, and I put like a little tiny dude, like a 1-1 in front of him, 
he'll get killed, but he'll absorb oh. all the damage. So if you want to buy more decks, you can do that too. No. So that's great. Yeah. No, is... no buying decks. Well, real quick, my my problem with the deck... no premium foil decks. <laughs> my problem with the deck manager is that if you want to remove cards, you can only go. It will not let you go below 60 and build it back up. You have to have 60 in there all the time, which is really non-intuitive for a Magic player, because you almost always start out with no cards and start adding them sure, in to sure. get the 60. 60 is the minimum in, in every, uh, in every um, most formats, so. All right, I'm gonna try, oh shit, how do I go back? Okay, save, and quit. I'm gonna try fighting green on green, and hopefully if we beat this guy, we'll be able to Check out the plane chase stuff. Uh, plane chase, plane, plane chase, which is the the, and I don't think you can skip any of these. Oh, you can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna barrel through it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Or Ryan, if you have any questions, because it sounds like Brad knows what he's talking about. I'm not even I'm sure some, where to begin with asking yeah. questions though. So so just I guess try and vocalize <laughs> as much of what's going on, and I will just say okay. I don't understand. I will. I'll tell you what. Rory will control it, and yes. I will talk. So right here, you get your opening hand. Okay. And then you get to take a look at it if you want to keep it or or not. Okay. So you can they call it a mulligan. You can throw it back, shuffle the deck. Familiar with that term. And then draw another draw another seven off the top and see if you like it, right? Okay. So he had a pretty good hand, so he's keeping it. Yeah. That's cool. So every turn you're gonna draw a card off the, off the top of the deck, and then you get to uh, use those lands to you play spells. One land a turn. So that dude that he just caught that he just cast is yeah. a creature. So it's a three-two trample dude, and it costs two green mana. So the forest makes green mana. He's got two of them. He can tap them. You turn them sideways to tap them. Yep. That means they're used up for your turn. It's a okay. mirror match. So and far. they each generate like one mana, and then you can play the dude that costs two. So more powerful spells cost more mana to cast. Sure. But uh, it means that you'll get them later in the game, if that makes sense. Like. Every turn you're building up like one resource. If you have it in your hand, you'll just play a land every turn. And so third turn of the game, you'll be able to play play a three casting cost thing, fourth turn four casting cost, and so on. But you have to like have the lands in your hand, be drawing them as you play them. You with me so far, Ryan Davis? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So um, it's like cash. It's like spending cash to buy something, basically. Landed. Except that you get it back at the end of every time. Yes. Right. At the beginning of every turn, you're going to untap it. So, so it's not at all like money at all. Because once I use no. money, it's gone. It's not like, okay, you used your money, now we're going to give it back to you right. now that that transaction's over. This is kind of funny because he's doing the exact same thing that I have doing each, like literally down to the, the, the exact same thing that he's done as what I've been doing. So. Because uh, playing, I'm playing the same deck against him. Oh, really? You want to do that? Uh, I think I'll take it for now. Uh, you can choose the block too. I'm, I'm gonna let that one go through so I can counterattack him next turn. Um, so then you saw that 20 that became a 17. Yep, that's your yep, life that's total. Life. You start with like 20 life. Um, so he just continually playing lands and then like playing out more creatures. It's kind of a bad sign though. I'm, I'm out of kind of stuff to cast now. Hopefully I'll start drawing something better next turn. Um, but for the moment, it's kind of dangerous. Uh, I'm gonna go and attack him. Says so he, if you attack, if you attack, you tap it. That means it can't attack next turn. Or it can't block it can't next block. turn. Right. Got it. So he has no defenses. I'm gonna go and attack him, and uh, we'll see how it helps. And then that dude's a three-two. So when he hits him, it'll do three damage. Right. There you go. So most of the most of the game revolves around like my creatures against your creatures, and I'm attacking, and you're choosing to block, and and back and forth like that. Shoot. Eight-eight right. eight, again. I think we're gonna lose this one too. We'll see. Unless I draw something really good next turn. Anything's possible. Nope. <clears throat> uh, can't we do much? So, deck editor, not great. No, not compared right. to what you can do with real cards. Uh, yeah, and again, that's the sort of like, you know, hamstrung on purpose type thing. Like, they made it really simple, but it's also not super powerful. Like, you couldn't mix two of these decks together. You can't Ugh. like you know build your own thing like it's just, but it's it's a great introduction to like the game to see if you like it. Yeah. You know like I think that's really what this. All right. So here's what, what I'm gonna try and do something complicated here. I'm gonna try and block him to the eight eight, and I can sacrifice this creature for for health. But the the timing on this is always super weird. Let me see if I can do so it. No. Because it's trample, it's all gonna go through. So, right so this is, oh, is enough, so yeah. the the sacrifice that is a quality specific to that card. Yes. Yeah, so that's like, so uh, Richard Garfield was the guy that like made Magic Gathering back in like 94, yeah. 95. 
And the actual core gameplay is like super simple. Like, well, okay, it's not super simple. Uh, but you know, it's like the lands and spells and the drawing one card per turn. I love that you know who hand. the game designer is. Yeah, he's, I, he's pretty well, well known in the. Uh, kinda, it's kind of my job. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of my job. To know no, no, no. Who it's... that guy is? Um, but wait, like, you restarted? Why? He made it super, super I was flexible. Die. He made it super, super flexible. Like you can just add new rules to the game whenever you want. Because they're just, all on the cards. You're just, you're just. Each card can have its own rules, and you can make up rule sets for like each new set that they they put out. And so the game is constantly evolving and changing as they like print new shit. And but that's like, why. And that's why you have like banned cards because someone went too crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they try to make stuff that's really powerful that'll like rile up their fan base and get them really excited. But sometimes you know they don't have a shitload of time to test them. So sometimes they like will actually screw it up. Keep on doing that, player. Kind of. Badly, and they, they they're to. better at it, about it now. Back in the early days, the, the whole thing is the game is supposed to be collectible in real life. Um, so they they the first time they put out the first set, they they didn't expect anybody to actually buy a huge amount of them. So they made cards that were way too powerful. Like there's one that you can just take another turn after the turn that you're on. It's it, it's called the Power Nine. These these old school banned cards that have been banned forever. They're all very valuable. Some of them are like 400, 500 bucks if you still have a copy of them. So um, there's a I keep on doing that. I'm, I'm used to the Steam version of this game. And I should say the Steam version has some weird peccadillos too. Um, sometimes it'll just Steam it'll just pause for like 30 seconds and do nothing for a while, um, and you're just like sitting there waiting for something to happen. So, uh, if you get a console, annoying. Uh, okay, cast that. I don't have a creature out. He's still got advantage here. I have a lot of forest, but not much else to cast. But yeah, just be very careful if you uh, buy this game. Word of warning. I already bought it. You're sort of, well, okay, you, you don't count. Folks at home. You didn't actually buy it. Yeah, folks at home. This is more I like did a, buy this. this is like a PSA. This is like a PSA, really. Yeah. Is that like. How did you do that? You are, he's got it again. <laughs> he's got the 8-8 again. Oh my God. Is that when you, when you play this game, you have to realize that you are like standing on <laughs> the edge a of a card. very deep abyss and you're like looking down and you're sort of like, oh yeah, you know. I'm going to take another attack. I'm going to try the red deck now. That's more keep, direct damage. Keep losing. It, it, that 8-8 eight, eight card it's, keeps on coming out. There's nothing I can do. Like we're playing five. on easy. I know. We put it on easy. Well, I, I think it's a matter of what they do when they do it, but I don't think it doesn't change the cards they have. Jeez. That is that is one of the things that's great about the game, though, is that, like, there's a lot of randomness in the game. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, some people don't, like... Maybe that guy just has, like, eight of those cards. <laughs> there, there's a maximum four. You can only have four cards of the same name per deck. Uh, so that is that is something that is uh, at least there. There's a, a maximum number of cards you can have of the same name, so it does restrict your. You, you can't just build a deck with a million of the same card. Although there is one card that gets around that rules, but uh, uh, weird weird one. Okay, I'm just gonna burn. Stuff. I like burning. Ooh, if I can get that out, that'd be good. Okay, I got a couple of direct damage spells, so I'm just gonna burn whatever he puts down, and hopefully I'll get a. So these are direct damage spells. Two mana, you can deal three damage to target creature, so you don't have to attack them to kill them anymore. You can just kind of kill them right off. I'm gonna see how this tactic takes me. Yeah, so Ryan, like the creatures, when you play them, they sit on the board. Yeah. Like they stick around turn after turn right. until they get killed. But then there are other types of spells like that. Um, what, what the hell is that thing called? Searing, Searing Spear. Searing Spear. Uh, so they have like, they call them instants and sorceries, and that's basically, they're just spells. They're, the instant sorcery definition is based on like, um, yeah, save that one. I'll save that one. What sort of situation would you take a card back? So they have, um, when you play a card like this, either when a creature dies or when you play one of these like instants or sorceries, it'll go into your, they call it your graveyard, which is basically like your discard pile, right? And that just sits there, but there are cards that will interact with with the discard? You look like you're falling asleep or are you thinking No, 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 I'm just thinking. So I was, I was thinking about how much all of this sounds exactly like Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, yeah, I've Yu -Oh never is, actually played Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. Yu I have played. It's not, Yu-Gi-Oh is much more about, in my opinion, it's much more about how much you can afford to spend on cards because uh, the more you spend, the better your deck will be. It's, it's not a super fair. Uh, but I just mean as far as kind of certain fundamentals of the, you know, Direct damage and yeah, I think that um, I think that it, I mean it definitely came after Magic, right? It did. Like, it did quite a bit after in the Pokemon yeah. game as well. Sure. This is not going well either. Um, if I can get this card down, <laughs> this uh, 
This, if I can last a few more turns, this will be a six-six fire. You guys are just not selling a lot yeah. of magic cards I know. here today, I feel you guys. Like, I thought this was going to be sort of the like The Wizards a, of the um, Coast heard yeah, you maligning thought, their name and I think have struck you is. down. It feels like they sort of reached in here into your hey. little uh, Xbox here There's and us. Hey. tweaked it. Hey, maybe they stacked the deck. <laughs> oh, man. Up top. Up top. Okay, so all I need to do is really is survive two more turns. Yeah, I know. Uh, he'll he'll move it over to another character to uh, give it haste. I'm sure he's going to come out with the uh, that eight eight pretty soon. This is going. So, I, mean, I think I think the thing that's impressed so me so poorly. far the most has not been your magic play, but has been your ability to identify these cards just from the little tiny. So that's uh, you know what that potion part, stamp of that part art is totally insane. Like the way that your brain is so good at like pattern matching and stuff. Yeah, you're like you and know what like, card that is. Even once though, you see it a couple barely times, barely tell what that yeah, is. Yeah, once you see it a couple times, you're like, oh yeah, that's you yes. know that that Searing card spear, does. Yeah, yeah, it costs two, costs two, does three damage or something. That's it. You know, it's like you're you just sort of like there's a ton of information that on that card that there's no no human being should be able to read from, yeah. from this resolution from this distance. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, and yet I if you play, you just know. Uh, I have... So if I can last one more turn... I can't even cast him. I'm dead. Oh, we start it again? Unless you guys want to... Let's, let's, how about we try something else? I'll show you a challenge deck. How about that? Okay. Um, how about how about you just die? Let's just watch you die. Oh, oh man, It'll take a little while. This is so this was savagely terrible. <sighs> trying to show, I trying keep... to trying to get through some of the content, and show some wins, and we just failed. You guys should have uh, should have played. If you if I had brought my Steam account, I would have been able to show you some more of this game. But uh, that uh, just some bad draws on the part of Garuk there. That's annoying. He drew well, I'd say. He just, but also, you were showing real life scenarios. This is what can happen. You can have two of the best magic players that I personally know come in here, <laughs> and they will still so get their asses I mean, kicked. That's kind of the you know that's kind of the the way the game is set up. Is that like you've got a deck full of like random shit, and you're gonna draw seven stuff, and then one every turn. So you know you got a sixty card deck. The game's gonna last I don't know eight, nine, ten turns. So that's only you know you're only gonna see like a third of your deck maybe during the game. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes you Matt, just, does that sound right? Does that sound accurate? Like yeah, eight, eight, eight to ten turns? A lot of sometimes the tournament just, games will only last, like, five or less. Like, there's a lot of tournament decks that will only... They're built for, like, turn two wins, turn three wins. It's a matter of getting those cards in your opening hand and, and popping them out. Do you ever go and watch Magic Tournament? No. I read about them online. I, re, I still read the website, uh, Daily Magic the Gathering, a fair amount. So this is an encounter. Uh, basically, what this deck does, it, some of these encounters are, are like, more puzzle type, type of things. They'll do the same thing turn after turn, uh, and you have to basically uh, figure out what their patterns are and play your cards quickly enough to beat them. That's interesting. It's I, weird. This is a new thing, right? Be yeah, wait, but your new. deck is not gonna do the same thing. My deck is randomized like I normally yeah, would be. That's interesting. Uh, and these guys don't play by the same rules. They, they'll, uh, they can cast, they'll, they can have more than uh, four cards in their deck, so uh, sometimes it gets really annoying. Uh, there's one black one that'll Keep on making discard every turn, and eventually it'll uh, it'll resurrect the biggest creature mm -hmm. deck from your. So he's, I think he's just gonna put out as many flying cards of as these possibly little one-one flying guys. And he'll probably do that for five or six turns, and then um, I'll probably die anyways. So uh, this is just a different way, a, a different type of yes, a different way to lose. Okay. But if you uh, if you if you restart the duel, he'll be doing the same thing again and again. It's he, he's locked into a pattern. He he can only do one thing. So there's no randomization on his part. It's just a matter of figuring out what he does and how to beat it, and also maybe selecting another deck because if he has a bunch of flying cards, that's going to be tough for me to deal with, unless I overpower him. I think he's just going to keep on attacking me every turn. So the creatures will have different properties and shit. So these little guys have flying as like a property on the card. Yeah. So that just means they can't uh, they can't be blocked by creatures that. Are on the ground. Got if it. That makes sense. So now I'm mana screwed, which means I don't. I'm not drawing any lands. So that's going to be tough for me to deal with, unless I. Uh, you can seat that guy up with that thing. Was the, that? New, the new guy? Put that on him. Was that my? Oh, I thought yeah. that was my. Oh, it's turn off. Yeah. Right, cool. I'm going to activate that ability. So this is another type of card. So and I mean, this is an interesting part about like the game itself where it's so expandable that they just made a new a whole new type of card that they call equipment which is a card that will sit out on the on the field and then you can pay mana to like 
staple it onto one of your other creatures, giving them more abilities. So in, in the real world magic game, they're releasing new cards constantly. Yes, three and, expansions a year usually. And uh, with these Duels of the Planeswalkers games, they are both adding new modes and also trying to keep them up to date on cards. Is that accurate? Yeah. For sure. It's definitely like a subset of what's yes. available. Sure. Like, there, in it's, the actual, it's not going like, to be everything. Yeah. Like uh, I said, that's, that's the Planeswalker thing is still uh, kind of annoying because Planeswalkers are the biggest new addition to the Magic world in a long time. Uh, and they also had, recently they put out cards that are flippable. They're, they're, they're like werewolves and stuff, they're a little morph. You actually flip them over and they have different stuff on front and back. Um, it's crazy cardboard technology. Two-sided cards. <laughs> yes, and it was like holy smokes. Super, yeah, super weird when they did that. Yeah. I don't know. How do you feel about that? You think it's silly? it was? It's kind of weird because every card that they had printed until that point, they've all had the same back. You yeah, no, it's no. Just like, you know, they have the same exact back, so they're all. Uh, so there's no no way to tell. Like, oh, I'm about to pull compatible. an awesome yeah, and card. Yeah, it's like all the way back to the very first set. It's like, you know, that was. Um, something they did so that all the cards would be compatible all the time, you know? But, um, yeah, they decided to go against that and make ones that have, like, like, it's just a different card on the back. And there are rules, and again, they had to print, you know, each of those cards has specific rules Free that side. tells you when you're gonna flip it over. So it's like, it's, I don't know. It, they just keep, you know, putting new shit out in the game. That's Despite like all the bugs and, and weirdness, and there are some bugs in this game, it's still well worth ten bucks. Even if you like, I don't play Magic anymore. I don't play it in real life, but it's a, it's a good value for the for what you get. This is, this is how you kind of scratch that yeah. itch. Ten bucks a year. Ten bucks a year, whatever. It's not Madden. Sure. It's uh, new new cards to play with and uh, everything else. Well, we're about running out of time, so so closing thoughts here, Matt Roy. You say ten bucks worth it? Yes. Uh, as a, as a fan, uh, Brad Muir, dude, ten bucks worth it. Especially, I mean, you're saying you're saying that it's it's not quite as fully featured as, as Magic: The Gathering online, but a better value. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And it's also, I mean, it's good for people that used to play. It you know just sort of like oh yeah like Every see once what in a while. see what's been up you know what have they how have they changed the game since and you I also last played it you guys also like feel like this is a good intro for, good, for new really players really good really good for new players to sort of like learn they have a good tutorial they have like you know they'll walk you through me the mechanics of like the different cards and all that stuff and that's yeah that's that's really well done uh, it's also just simplified like the rules are just slightly simplified at each of the steps like yeah you can get really fucking nerdy and wankery about like when certain things happen and like what the sure. the various steps of each turn and things like that and like there I, I think they do a good job of sort of like you know condensing that down and, and skipping over some things that are like maybe a little too wankerific yeah I don't know. it's 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 well worth the, the money to me I don't know it also makes you feel like a fucking wizard <laughs> <laughs> like and, that, and, and, and for a game called magic you think that would be the most important quality so it is you know I mean that is one of the good things about it is that like I think it's nicely contextualized where you're actually attacking the other player you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like you actually you actually feel like you're part you're more part of the game like whereas a board game if you have like a piece and that's, and that's key for game design because they are actually attacking you right it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah that's yeah and i think that that's one of the um one of the really good things about the game in general is that it's just things are nicely contextualized and it's yeah, rules are good and it's, yeah. <laughs> the rules, rules are good. good. The rules are good. Brad Beer from Double Fine, ladies and gentlemen. There's a bunch of fucking rules, and the rules are really good. And uh, uh, did you lose that one, too? I think I was about to. Because, <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let Brad and, and Matt here <laughs> lose another match, but we're going to say goodbye. Uh, Brad Muir and Matthew Roy, thank you guys so Dude, much for, for coming and playing for, some magic here for on the couch. Me. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this live, stay tuned for Breaking Brad. That's coming up momentarily. That's for <gasps> premium members only, though. You just got so excited. You just got so excited. <laughs> I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna win this. Brad Shoemaker's <laughs> gonna play Doom Two on Inferno uh, while these guys play Magic: The Gathering, I, but that's not gonna happen at the same time. Stay tuned for for that if you're a premium member. Otherwise, we'll see you guys later.